Hey yo guys, I'm back here to give you my thoughts on a bunch of the news items and shows that took place over the past couple of weeks that I was then able to give you my thoughts of right away as I was away, give, you know, attending to matters more important than combat sports. But, uh, man, what a crazy couple of weeks it's been, uh, whether it was, you know, shows that took place on pay-per-view or free television, whether it was, um, you know, guys getting released from their contracts, whether it was even death, uh, you know, just in crazy couple of weeks. Uh, so now I'm just going to give you my thoughts on a number of these items. And yeah, so anyways, the biggest news that took place over the uh, past couple of weeks or a couple of weeks I was gone was the untimely death of the greatest uh, pro wrestling worker of all time, and that being uh, Mitsuhara Masawa. Um, you know, Masawa's death was both is really tragic in the way he went. Um, you know, considering you know how much this man had given to pro wrestling, you know, it, it was kind of it was just sad to see him, you know lying there in the ring, just unable to get up. Considering you know the types of bumps, if you've seen a Masawa match, you know, in his prime, and you know. The mid '90s, the bumps he took, it was just insane. Uh, you know, it was an unfortunate way to go. I mean, yes, uh, going over it again. You know, he was in a tag match with uh, Go Shizaki as his partner against uh, Ashitoshi Saito and uh, Bison Smith, and uh, Saito gave him a, a, a back suplex. You know, that was not even dangerous compared to some of the stuff, like I said, that Masawa had taken in the past. And he hit his head, and you know, you know, now with the reports, you know. He just severed his spine, and that was it for Masawa. And, you know, it was just unfortunate. Um, there, I mean, that was a JHC Tag Team Championship match, but that's obviously not even an important factor at all. Um, he was unable to get up, and, you know, they tried to revive him. They, you know, rushed him to the hospital, and he was, you know, pronounced dead. And that was just absolutely the most shocking thing, I think, uh, I'd, I had read in quite some time because... I, Masao was one of those dudes you never thought would die, especially in the ring. You never thought he would die. I mean, he was tough as hell. Um, you know, whether it was, you know, the fact he was the best of shape anymore. or so, To me, it's just a freak accident. That's how it was. I mean, you know, he got dumped on his head and his spine just severed. And he, you know, that was it. That's just how it was. Um, to me, Masao... You know, Masao was always going to have a special place in my heart. I mean, he was, obviously, like I said in the beginning of the video, the greatest worker of all time because he was had this uncanny ability of to do so many things that make peop, you know, people great in the business, but they can only have a couple of those qualities. And I think Masao had them all. You know, he was obviously fantastic in the ring. He was, all, he was great at building a match. He had fantastic timing. He knew when to do what and uh, why to do it. You know, building of a match from, you know, you hear, you know, you'd, you know, people would say, man, you got to check this match out. And you're watching it and, you know, 20 minutes, you know, it's, it's, it's good, but nothing like this is the greatest thing of all time. And then they just, you know, go, go, go hit, you know, this amazing, you know, flu flow of tree and stuff. I mean, just the chemistry he would have with the guy towards a finish, just awesome stuff. Um, so that's why I think he's one of the best. You know, I got a, my first chance to see Masawa when he was uh, Tiger Mask 2 um, back when WWF and New Japan and All Japan ran a, a super show at the Tokyo Dome uh, where it was the main event was Stan Hansen versus Hulk Hogan and you also had Macho Man Randy Savage versus Tenru on the card. You The WWF title was on the line when Ted DiBiase challenged the Ultimate Warrior for it. And of course you had Tiger Mask 2 wrestle Bret Hart. Uh, it was obviously one of the better matches on the card, um, but still, I mean, that's the first song, and, you know, little did, you know, eventually as he got older, it's like, wow, that was Masao versus Bret Hart. That was just fucking awesome. I mean, uh, incredible stuff. But then, you know, once, you know, he left the gimmick, which, you know, it, it's a time-honored tradition in Japan, and, you know, he wasn't the most successful with it. I'd say he's, you know, probably the second most successful. Obviously, the most successful is uh, Saitora Sayama, is the original Tiger Mask, who had those incredible matches with Dynamite Kid back in New Japan. Um, anyways, with, you know, he left the gimmick, and then he became, you know, a world of his own. 
he became the greatest worker of all time, you know, under that gimmick. Uh, not, excuse me, as himself. You know, whether it was great matches with Jumbo Saruda uh, in, in 1990 when he, uh, when he won the Triple Crown in all, in all Japan, whether it was matches with Terry Gordy, uh, Dr. Death Steve Williams, um, whether it was in tag matches with teaming with uh, Kenta Kobashi um, against, you know, the likes of Kawada Taue or Dr. Death Steve Williams and uh, uh, Johnny Ace for that matter, you know, whether it was, you know, those epic matches with, against Toshiaka Kawada or uh, Kenta Kobashi, or even if it was in recent years where, you know, he would have, you know, those, those great matches with, you know, um, really, I should say, with, you know, uh, Marafuji or Kenta or, you know, even, you know, his last big title match when he, he dropped the GHC championship to Takeshi Morishima, I still thought it was a really good match. Um, for a Masawa, who, you know, obviously wasn't the same Masawa we're, you know, we're accustomed to, but still, fantastic stuff there. Um, so, to me, that's where he's going to hold a special place in my heart there, you know, just for those matches. Um, you know, he, definitely, potentially the greatest match, two of the greatest matches of all time, and, you know, and the greatest feuds of all time, you know, in my opinion, are up there, you know, whether it was the Kawada Masawa feud, which, when you look back at it on hindsight, you're like, how could this be the greatest thing, you know, Masawa won every match, but it was just how they had the matches where it was, you know, Kawada would always come that close to beating Masawa, but he could never do it, uh, so that's where you, you throw that in there, um, the match they had in 94 was up there as one of the greatest of all time, but I think the greatest match of all time was Mitsuharu Masao versus Kenta Kobashi from, I believe, January, or, it's either January or February of 1997. This was incredible. I mean, the stuff they did, the, you know, some of the spots were definitely really choreographed, but still. The, the way they pulled them out, I mean, you can have a really choreographed spot, but it can be blown to fuck. This was just some stuff to perfection. They just hit everything perfect, did everything perfect, had the crowd in there perfect. And, you know, when you looked at it, you know, back in hindsight, I'm a obviously one of the top five guys in the 90s, um, you know, of the 90s of all time. Uh, you know, you got to look at it. It's Steve Austin, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels... Um, you want, you can throw Hogan in there and Masawa because of the stuff that they were doing that was just incredible. And the fact that this guy was just incredible work rate, you know, incredible everything I said, you know. And then, you know, you have to give, uh, you know, Masawa gets a lot of credit in my heart because he wanted to leave all Japan. You know, he wasn't happy there um, to form his own company. And he got basically the go-ahead uh, from NTV which was the television network in Japan that, you know, had, had wrestling on there for 50 years, and they, uh, unfortunately, due to the poor economy there, they cut that short. Um, in Japan, uh, with the last Pro Wrestling Noah show taking, or the last wrestling show taking on there with the Noah show from March the 1st, when uh, Aki Ujuna won the GHC championship on that show um, from Kensuke Sasaki. But anyways, uh, uh, you know, he wanted to set up his own company in Noah. But, you know, he felt, you know, the network felt and he felt that, you know, Baba meant so much to that network and to him that, you know, he couldn't leave and just start, you know, with Baba at the ailing health. So, you know, about 16 months after Baba, you know, death, which was, you know, inevitable, you know, he was battling with cancer, he formed Noah. And, you know, that takes a lot of guts. I mean, and, you know, to have the respect, he took like over 90% of the old Japan roster with him. And, you know, from that point, All Japan hasn't been able to really get back to where they were. Um, so, that's just really my thoughts there. And, you know, having those, you know, one more great match with Kenta Kobashi in 2003. March the 1st of 2003, to be exact. Um, so, that's just my thoughts there. I mean, Masao would definitely be truly missed. I mean, I thought it was, you know, a true class act by um, every major company to, you know, either, you know, toll a bell or write something about him. I mean, you know, TNA mentioned it, WWE did, you know, Johnny Ace, who uh, worked in all Japan, you know, with Masawa around that time frame, mid-90s, early 90s, um, you know, wrote something about him. Jim Ross wrote something about him. I heard TNA, you know, they put something on their website. Um, and Ring of Honor, 
Uh, you know, they did a 10 bell salute for him, which is truly classly. And AAA, when they had their uh, Triple Mania show, uh, did a, you know, a, a thing for him, you know, a thing saying, you know, rest in peace, Misawa. Uh, they also threw it in there with the likes of Abismo Negro and Pena. But, but still, I mean, to take the time to do that, you know, for a guy who never worked for your company, that's just still really important. It shows the legacy Misawa had here. Um, and how even uh, Punk last night on Raw had Misawa written on his uh, tape and was actually doing Misawa moves. He did a Misawa dive through the rope and threw some elbows like, you know, Misawa would. So, you know, that's just incredible. I mean, just the legacy he left behind. I mean, if you ever a Masao match to watch, you know, I definitely gave you my two favorites, the Kawada one from 94 and the match with Kobashi in 97, but just look at the list, you know, if you want to see the first true great Masao match, it's definitely against Jumbo Saruta in 90, but there's a list of over his 24, his 24 five-star matches, so that's just something you gotta really take it, and now will never be broken again, state wrestling games, but anyway, um, continuing with wrestling, everyone wants to know my thoughts on Extreme Rules. All I gotta say was really two things. It was Chris Jericho, oh, well, three things. It was Chris Jericho being awesome. Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio have an awesome match in a, a, a really good ladder match. That's the only way I can really sum this show up. Um, it really wasn't the greatest, it wasn't that, you know, noteworthy. I thought, you know, Extreme Rules normally... They have some matches on there that, you know, you look at, and, you know, this card may surprise you could, you know, if everything goes right and all the stars align, it could be the, potentially the best show of the year, but, you know, that's just, you know, maybe me being over-hyping it. Um, you know, I thought Jericho cutting a great promo up in the, up in the concession stand and walking his way down, that was awesome. Awesome match with Rey Mysterio, something I definitely thought was better than the previous pay-per-view there uh, that the two had. Um, and then, you know, the ladder match was really good. You know, they did some new innovative spots, especially the spot where you had, you know, Jeff Hardy, uh, uh, put Edge stomach first on the, the, the rung type deals that hold the ladder together so it can stand up and actually be a ladder. Um, but other than that, you know, we had, that pay-per-view was just those two matches. Most of the stuff was bad, uh, or horrible, or just there. I mean, you had your opener with... The four-way for the U.S. belt, I mean, with the talent in there, it was not good. I mean, their timing was off a lot on the stuff there. You know, it was really sloppy, and finish wasn't that well executed. The hog pen match was terrible, atrocious. Uh, never mention it again. need to see that match again. And Cena and Big Show was just a bore. I mean, they gave that match the most time, and it was terrible. So that's just the way I'm going to look at the show there. Uh, switching to MMA, there have been a lot of MMA shows that took place over the past couple of weeks, whether it was uh, Strike Force, WEC, or um, UFC 99. Now, I haven't seen all of UFC 99. I will say that I've seen two fights on the card: uh, Spencer Kit Fisher versus Cal Uno, and the uh, Mike Swick Ben Killaby Saunders fight. Uh, those are the only fights I've seen. Uh, I really would like to see the whole card. I heard uh, Silva and Franklin had a good fight, and that uh, Dan Hardy and Marcus Davis had another good fight. And I just got to see the Crow Cop uh, Mustafa Al Turk fight just for the controversy. And, you know, it's the last time we're probably ever going to see Crow Cop in the octagon after, you know, his management said that he's going to go fight with Dream, which, you know, he is a bigger fan following there. So that's just basically what I can expect. But with um, WEC. Definitely a show of the year candidate there. Um, uh, easily, you know, the Faber-Brown uh, fight was fantastic. You know, Faber, a warrior, able to go five rounds with a broken hand, two, a broken hand, a dislocated hand. Awesome stuff there. Um, as well, the Scott Jorgensen, uh, Antonio Benuelos fight. That was just another awesome thing that we got to see there. We also got to, you know, see an emotional goodbye uh, from Jens Pulva. Don't know if he'll actually leave. But that's just uh, something, I, I think he may leave, you know, uh, what, four losses in a row, um, you know, losses to Faber, Garcia, and now uh, Grispy. Uh, you know, Josh Grispy, got to give him credit, you know, he saw the takedown and just pulled guillotine and pulled into a guillotine. With Strikeforce, I will say, you know, they actually had a really good card. It started out slow, 
with, you know, Kevin Randleman and Mike Whitehead, you know, Mike Whitehead got to keep the pace going, you know, his way slow and methodical, and just to grind out the decision there. Uh, I was actually impressed with Mike Whitehead's ability to down a two-time uh, NCAA, like, All-American wrestler, like, with ease how he took down Kevin Randleman. You know, Randleman had his moment in there where he looked like he could have finished off Whitehead, but unfortunately he didn't, so that was that. Um, really, then, you know, the other things that make were the other, obviously the most telling thing on this is the star-making performance there of Brett the Grim Rogers. Now, I knew how talented Brett Rogers was in Elite XC. Um, when he had his fight with um, James Thompson uh, back at the Street Certified card, um, you know, a lot of people, well, it's James Thompson, but James Thompson's actually, you know, a tougher guy than you know, people give him credit for. Um, he went in there and, you know, fought tough. And, you know, now he went in there and he just rocked, you know, a former heavyweight champion in the UFC uh, with ease. He beat, he beat uh, Frankowski quicker than Fedor did, which, you know, I don't think that's a fair thing to say because Fedor's style is kind of like wait for the action to come to you more so than I'm going to come out there and dictate the pace where that's Roger's style. He just went rushed and did the job. But... Clearly, it looks like Strikeforce next card would assume, or you know, they would assume that they would have you know uh, Alistair Overeem versus Rogers because you know that's a fight I think they need to have happen, and I think you know they you know Brett Rogers needs to have that fight. I think he clearly earned it. Um, and star performance, yeah, we had, and you know the other thing was you know Jake Shields' ability to beat uh, Robbie Lawler, you know. Was it shocking to an extent? I really didn't find it as shocking as most. As I, I, well, I picked Shields, but I, I mean, I knew Shields' jiu-jitsu was so good. And it shows how much of a smart fight it was when he realized, look, couldn't get him down, so I'm just going to, you know, wait to make a move when, you know, uh, Lawler goes in and shoots on me. I'm just going to do what I got to do, pull my uh, jiu-jitsu to work. Um, that was that card. And real, like I said, I'd seen you, most of UFC 99. Uh, I only saw those two fights, but with the Fisher Uno fight, I thought it was actually a really good competitive uh, grappling battle more so than anything. Um, don't know what the judges were thinking the uh, victory there to Spencer Fisher, as you know, you give him the first round, yes. Second round, I mean, very close, but I thought you know Uno just did a smidge more. And then in the third round, you know, the last you know uh, 50 seconds, it was, you know, Uno on top, raining down, you know, shots, not, not enough to finish, but still doing the damage there, and then, you know, Swift finished off, uh, uh, Ben Saunders after a pretty technical battle, but he eventually just got the job done there in the second, and then lastly, uh, Floyd Mayweather's, you know, epic fight that a lot of people were looking forward to, and I was one of them, against uh, Juan Manuel Marquez has been uh, taken off due to the fact that uh, Mayweather has a rib injury, which sucks, but you know what? They may, they may be for the better because of how many big, you know, shows are coming up. Uh, and, you know, in its own special slot, you know, like they did with the Pacquiao uh, De La Hoya fight early December uh, or, or late November, I think you're going to be in a good uh, spot to have the show there, so... I, you know what, it, it sucks because HBO have been putting a lot of time and effort, you know, on their shows. Uh, speaking of shows, I did miss the Kodo Claudi fight, and I heard that was another great fight. Uh, but I, I'll find my way to see it, no, I'm not too worried about that. You know, with that, it sucks, you know, they've been filming stuff for 24-7, and you know, Marcus has to wait. So, is the Mayweather injury from the layoff? Eh, I, I, you would, one would assume it would be, but, um... You know, things happen you know, you're, when you're, you know, training, you know, especially, you know, the fact now that Mayweather, you know, he's kind of feels disrespected that people are calling Pacquiao number one fighter in the world, which, you know, to me, he is. Floyd, you don't decide, I'm never going to fight anymore, uh, which, you know, then again, comments, but you know, can't take any, that, anything like that serious. But anyways, uh, you know, they're fighting and, you know, he's training hard and, you know, you know, just a shot, you know, just a clean shot that happens, you know, it. I don't think it's a, a big a deal as people are making. It sucks for sure that, you know, the pay-per-view is not going to take place because I damn sure was going to order that thing to see because that fight had the makings of awesomeness, you know. So, but, you know, it's not like the fight is off completely. They're just going to reschedule it, move into a different date. So, in the long run, the boxing fans will have their fight to see and I will have my the great fight to see. So, other than that, that's everything, you know. If there's anything else you wanted me to talk about, just send it to my inbox you know, for a Q&A. Uh, I was going to do one, but, you know, I have to leave. 
Uh, so if you just want to send yourself some new questions or what have you, you know, stuff from the past, stuff new, whatever, just send it to my inbox and I'll make a Q&A and stuff of that nature. But anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.